give a warm welcome to our View from the Top moderator, Hope King. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be here. Thank you for sticking around, but also just for the energy in the room. This is one of my favorite events to host here in New York, and especially on the topic of AI, because it is going to be the dominant force of our lifetime. We will have a short break, as we mentioned, but first, this next chat is really about the complexity of data security in an AI dominant world. We have the perfect guest to sit down with me to talk about this. Rob Sobers is the Chief Marketing Officer at Veronis, which helps companies safeguard sensitive information in this increasingly complex environment. Please welcome him to the stage, Rob. All right, thanks for joining me. Yeah. So we've had a couple of really passionate conversations around this topic already, so I'm very excited to dive into this with you. Um, but you and Veruna specifically have been ahead of the curve, really, in AI data security for nearly two decades. So I imagine there have been a few I told you so moments over this time, but I am curious, what's genuinely surprised you? What shifts or challenges did you not see coming? Yeah, you know, Hope, I've been focused on the problem of securing the world's data for the better part of my adult life at this point. And along the way, there were moments where I was like, I am sure this is the moment where everybody else is going to care about this as much as I do. Mm -hmm. We all remember when the Target breach happened and 40 million credit card numbers got leaked on the dark web or LinkedIn when everyone had to change their password because there was this massive leak. Um, and Sony Pictures, when, if you remember that hack. So each of these moments, I kept waiting for this big epiphany to happen where companies would say, you know what, we need to invest in data security. We need to make this right. And then GDPR happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this is definitely the moment. You, know, you can get fined up to 4% of your global revenue, which for a company like Apple, if they mishandle EU citizen data, losing 4% of your revenue, Surely that's a big enough stick to make people care. And it did change the game, but nothing has put data security at the forefront of conversations with CEOs and boards like AI. AI feasts on data, and the problem has always existed, but nothing has shown a light on it the way that AI does. I love that word that you use, the, the active verb feasts. I mean, it, it's so true. So when you see AI feasting on data and you're looking ahead to the, the horizon, what other shifts do you see um, when we were chatting before, you know, you said something really provocative to me. You said, we're entering an era where agents will work with agents. What does that actually look like in real life? Yeah, so even outside of the context of security, I just sort of see a world where the browser isn't our home anymore, and we're not going to have, you know, 50 different apps on our phone. Uh, think about just submitting an expense report when you're done with this trip, right? What do you have to do? It's death by a thousand tabs. You go into your inbox and then your calendar. What hotel did I Photo stay albums, at? the receipts, the t yeah. Exactly. So imagine you know, going from drop downs and dashboards to directives, basically telling your AI super assistant, hey, go handle my expenses from my Boston trip. And it goes and it's got connectivity into your calendar, into your camera roll, into your Expensify or whatever system. And then if it has an exception, let's say you spent too much on a dinner and the finance team rejects it, yeah. the agent speaks to the finance team's agent and just reconciles it without you, right? So that's the world that I see you know, happening right now. And I'm sure even cooler use cases besides expense reports are going to crop up. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that I get those phone calls quite often. So <laughs> I, I'm feeling too seen right now. Yeah. But specifically at Veronis, what are you doing under the hood to actually secure the data layer that all of these AI tools now depend on? Because there are so many, and if they're working together, I imagine they get to be really, really complex. Yeah, I mean, whether it's a human in a browser or an agent with an agent, um, what doesn't change is that we have to make sure that only the right entities can access the right data at all times. So what Veronis does is first and foremost understand the data in a business. So AI-powered data discovery and classification is super important so that you know where your crown jewels are, right? You don't want to protect next week's luncheon menus as carefully as you do your sort of M&A plans. Mm -hmm. And so understanding what you have, both from a risk perspective, you know, what should I put more money into protecting, but also opportunistically, mm -hmm. 
what can I use to feed these AI models? What might I want to use for training data? So that's number one. And then number two is this holy grail of ensuring the right access at all times. And in the future, when we have not only employees, but armies of AI agents acting on their behalf, there's a lot more interconnectivity and sort of these transactions occurring that could be potentially dangerous or not even malicious, but just sort of out of policy. It just sounds like a lot on top of a lot on top of a lot. So how are you managing all of this? Is, is much of it done through a human workforce or is it really looking at more automotive or automation and features like that? Yeah, so automation is, is in our lifeblood at Veronis. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we really want to make sure that in a world where data creation is automated, that the protection of that data is also automated. It's really, truly the only way this scales, right? So a good example is we offer a service to our customers to help investigate any security alerts they might have, because many of them don't have, you know, 100-person security teams in a security operations center. And so we have an AI do the initial investigation, sort of the part of that workflow that's kind of uninteresting, you know, gathering log data, figuring out timestamps, maybe investigating you know, what we call indicators of compromise. The AI does that and sort of serves up the investigation results to a human, and then the human can kind of do the last mile, which is the really interesting part of figuring out what happened, was it a breach, or, or do we have to act? But I think the important thing there is that the automation scales, and it will help scale, and scale is really important. Um, I think what's most fascinating about your background is that you are a developer at heart, still, very much so. And so you've also seen firsthand how systems are built and how they break. But I think when we see this feasting of data, and when we see dramatically more dependency on technology and data, what is really kind of the risk? Like, what happens if we don't get security right? Yeah, so you, you sort of have kind of the canonical example of someone rolling out a, a ChatGPT enterprise or a Microsoft 365 Copilot and, you know, wanting to get the productivity gains. And then the first employee sort of says, hey, you know, who are the new hires that are starting next week? And you start to see not only their names, but their background checks, right? And their social security numbers. And things that you weren't supposed to see. And then the IT team kind of freaks out and unplugs it all and says, OK, we need to kind of look at the underlying security here. Um, so, so that's one thing. But the other thing that uh, you know, we've been helping customers with, and, and it's kind of scary if we don't get right, is these sort of AI training pipelines. So we were working with an organization who was doing um, research to cure Alzheimer's. And they were feeding medical research data from different systems into this custom model. And all of a sudden, we noticed a new data flow mm. popping up out of nowhere. Mm. And it turned out an attacker was doing something called model poisoning, where they were feeding synthetic data into the pipeline that was very subtly different than the data that was supposed to be going into the model. And when you think about the downstream impacts, you know, that could change subtly the dosage of a medication, medication that you're giving somebody. And so, you know, it's super important to get the, the trust and security layer right so that we could take advantage of all the productivity. But it also just sounds like we still don't know what some of those emerging threats could be. I mean, we couldn't have imagined that somebody would want to infiltrate at that level for, for those nefarious reasons. I think that the most important question, I think, for all of us as, as citizens is what the impact will be on the average person that doesn't think about data security. How can you share with folks who are not as data savvy or AI savvy um, what those risks are to them if they don't understand the importance of this? Yeah, well, I think uh, more and more the world just runs on data. You know, um, if you really kind of look under the hood, you know, data tells cars where to drive now. You know, it, it informs patient care, like right. we just talked about. Yep. It's sort of the engine behind a lot of society. We actually, you know, saw an oil pipeline get shut down. If you guys remember the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack a few years yes. ago. Yes. You know, That's our but, infrastructure. Yeah, infrastructure. We saw what happened with the, the CrowdStrike incident last year where airports were literally impacted. And so I think your average citizen isn't thinking about the underlying data layer, but they're very much impacted when that data layer isn't secure. And um, yeah, it's just it's emerging in interesting ways that we haven't necessarily thought of. I mean, we've, we've seen um, people sort of go for a job interview on Zoom with a completely AI-generated avatar and voice, get hired, and then 
infiltrate that company and steal data. It's, it's pretty wild what we, what we see. You, you must have some, some stories, which unfortunately we don't have all the time for today to share, but I so appreciate you, Rob, for being here and also for Verotis for really sponsoring and partnering with us on this great afternoon. We really appreciate it. Um, to our audience, thank you for sticking around for this first half. We have a second half coming up, but don't forget we've got the interactive AI CEOs uh, in the back and also specialty lattes from Sneak Downstairs. And then we have a great second half coming up with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, as well as the CEO of Runway, Chris Valenzuela. So stick around. Rob, thank you so much for being here. Thanks thank you so much. much. Awesome. Thank you.